of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Choir, the Lord bless you more and more in Jesus' name. If you don't mind, can we just appreciate the choir? Just giving the Lord a big, a big clap on their behalf. We welcome the virtual church, the almighty God. We meet you where you are in the name of Jesus. Well, it's the grand finale of the power conference that started on Thursday. Uh, the power conference came right at about the middle of the month as against the end of the month, which is the usual schedule. And I believe that's because somebody's blessing cannot wait till the end of the month. And the, the blessings have been coming in from Thursday to Friday. And today I believe that our cup shall run over in the name of Jesus. Come and see. It's been our text since the beginning of the month. Uh, this morning the message is titled, Invited for a Purpose. Invited for a Purpose. We'll take only one verse of the scriptures. John 1, verse 43. John 1, verse 43. The day following, Jesus will go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and said unto him, Follow me. Every invitation has a purpose and a demand. Invitation to a management meeting, for example, is to address management issues. And it demands that you must be a manager to attend. Invitation for an employment interview is to check the suitability of candidacy and may require that you come with your credentials. Invitation for visa interview is to evaluate your qualification for entry into another country different from your country of origin and we require you come with documentation. An invitation to a banquet is an invitation to eat. <laughs> I don't think you get to a banquet meeting and there's no food. <laughs> and it may require a dress code to enter. You are always invited for a purpose. Whenever there's an invitation, there is a purpose for that invitation. And there is always a demand. There is always a purpose when Jesus extends an invitation to man. And there is definitely a demand or qualification. This morning, by the grace of God, I want to share with us, as led by the Spirit, three distinct invitations of Christ to man. What would be the purpose? What are the demands? Number one, the invitation, come unto me, is to receive rest. The purpose of that invitation, come unto me, is for man to receive rest. That invitation is in Matthew 11, verse 28. Matthew 11, 28, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The purpose for that invitation is that man may get rest. No one can receive rest except in Christ. <laughs> Not even in the, in the world as we see it now. Because you go to bed <laughs> one night and then you wake up in the morning, there has been trouble somewhere. The thinking that money means more rest <laughs> has proved to be daydreaming. Truth be told, the more money you get, the more sleepless night <laughs> you have. Glory be to God. <laughs> you know, one lady called Lara Page said, and I quote, 1.8 million pounds sterling lottery, lottery win, wrecked my life. I mean, if money will give rest, how could somebody that had just won 1.8 million Pound sterling, not U.S. dollars. She said that money wrecked her life. As a matter of fact, she lost her 14-year-old marriage in the process. Lost money, lost houses, lost everything. Literally wrecked. That says to you very clearly that as we pursue money, and it's good to have money. Money is good. I just want to let you know that it won't give you rest. You can buy a waterbed, 
but you cannot buy sleep. There are many people with a lot of money. They roll from one side of the bed to the other. The bed is electronically or electrically controlled. They control the temperature, control the height, control everything. But still, they can't sleep. Because Psalms 127 2b says, He, Jesus, giveth his beloved sleep. The rich can be sweating restlessly in a cold room. And the driver, the official driver, can be so restful under the sun. There was a man who came from a meeting, a board, boardroom meeting. Of course, you know the boardroom is AC. The best of ACs are put in the boardroom. And then he came down in the sun. The car was parked in the sun, the parking lot, hot. And the driver, John, pushed down the, the seat, was snoring in the afternoon. The manager said, John, John. And he called the house to shake the thing. He said, John said, oh, you are, you are here, sir. He said, and when the manager sat down, he shook his head, and he was shedding tears. And John said, sir, is everything all right, sir? And man said, I wish we can switch position. That you take my position, and I take your position. Ah. The driver said, are you making fun of me? He said, no, I'm serious. That you, under the sun, can sleep that I call your name three times. I had to shake the thing before you wake up. Ah, then the, the driver got the message. He said, ah, I can sleep on water. <laughs> Brethren, only Jesus gives rest. Your position cannot give you rest. Your influence, your affluence cannot give you rest. That's why Jesus sent this invitation. I said, come on to me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. The purpose for that invitation is that we may have rest. I mean, I was sharing with Pastor uh, Bona earlier on this morning. Now, I mean, in my meditation, I just, when I was getting ready for this part of the message, I said, ah, Lord, I thank you. Think of the life of a pastor. Nothing must happen to any member of the church. Oh, I mean, I'm talking about a good pastor. Because then you will have to be everywhere. But you know how many people that are here, and that is potential reason for, for issue. But you, every day, just, Lord, every one of us were in your hands. I know how we'd be well today. And so you are at rest. Someone calls you, Pastor, we are on our way to have a baby in the hospital. Uh, the doctor said the baby is um, something. I say, all oh, will be well. And the only way you are saying all oh, will be well is that you know <laughs> everything is in the hand of Christ. Otherwise, as a pastor, you might die before your time. Because there are many things that can go wrong every day. That's why Jesus knows he knew, he knew way back. And he knows now that we will need rest. And he knows we can't get it elsewhere except in him. So he said, come, come, come unto me. The invitation, however, has a little demand. And it's very simple. It's to come under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Nothing can be easier than that. Invitation to receive rest is extended to man because nobody else can give man rest from all the toils except Christ. But I see demand, like I told you earlier, if you are going to attend an invitation for, you know, an interview at the embassy, they say, come with your documentation. If you are invited for interview for a job, come with your credentials. Jesus is saying the only thing you need to do is come under my management. Come under my lordship. The troubles around the world demand that we have constant access to rest. The only place you can find rest is in Christ. And Christ is saying you will get this rest if you come under my lordship. That's why I'm believing God for someone this morning. That from now on, you will have rest in the name of Jesus. It's beautiful to eat your bed. 
and I eat the bed, ask my wife. In about 60 seconds, I am gone. And you can beat drum if you like. <laughs> I, am, I sleep peacefully. I give God the glory. Because it's joy. See, when you sleep one hour and it looks like eight hours, that's rest. May every one of us begin to enjoy rest now in the name of Jesus. The second invitation is the invitation, come and drink. The invitation, come and drink, is the invitation to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. John 7, verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Brethren, there is a constant thirst and quest for power in man. Every man quests, thirsts for power. Come and drink means come and receive the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no power you have. If it's not the power of the Holy Spirit, you will still be defeated. And if you read John 7, verse 38 and 39, he said, he that believeth, 38 and 39, he that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Verse 39. But this speak ye of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now the Holy Spirit is available for us. So when he says, come and drink, he says, come and be empowered of the Holy Spirit. Brethren, in life, if you are powerless, you are in trouble. And power, power in levels. There are manners of power drinks, but there is none like the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit will disgrace the demonic powers. King Saul was a powerful king, the first king of Israel. But when he was possessed of demons, evil spirit, each time David came in and he played the instrument and the anointing came down, what happened to the demons? They fled. It's because we, we have not been filled adequately that you are afraid of witches. Myself, coach, and one of our brothers in Canada and I visited, you know, a place called Kachia in Kaduna State of Nigeria some years ago on some mission visit. We were stopped by in Joss at the Nifest office, and then we went to this place. So the missionary, you know, agent there, they have been waiting for us. They prepared a crusade for us in a nearby village called Obron. <laughs> so as soon as we got there, you know, they told us that, well, this village we are going, you know, they're seriously, demonically possessed. An average girl is a witch, not talk about a woman. So we just thought we should let you know in advance. So we look at ourselves, we have had breakfast, we had had lunch, <laughs> we are going for this. Say, oh, God, have mercy. But well, suddenly we realize that the Holy Spirit in the life of a Christian will make witches be afraid even before you arrive. Because it's not you. They know their limits. And it's not whether you had eaten yam or, I mean, it's good to fast, and I fast a lot. But it just happened that uh, we didn't know we were coming to deal with <laughs> witches. And the Lord was glorified that night. So, what kind of power? What power do you have? Political powers are embarrassed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Elijah, with the, by the power of the Holy Spirit, decreed the hand of the politically powerful King Ahab and the wife Jezebel. Oh, Ahab looked at, at um, Elijah looked at Ahab. He said, that same place where a dog licked the blood of Naboth, the very place, that's where you'll be wasted. And your blood licked Jezebel. Hear me very well. I mean, if you don't have, <laughs> if you don't have power of the Holy Spirit, you don't, you don't talk to a king like that. I mean, not, not, at least not King Ahab. But when you carry the power of the Holy Spirit, you will embarrass the politically powerful man. If you know how much money people pay to get into office in the politics, you'll be surprised. But here we are with the supreme power, the power of the Holy Spirit. Elisha arrested a whole army of the king of Syria with all the military powers by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Second Kings 6, 18 and 19 was a short prayer. Less than one minute. Say, Lord, smite them with blindness. They were all, they became blind immediately. They were moving around. I'm believing God that as we answer this invitation this morning, this power will come like never before. Can I hear your amen? The invitation, come and drink, is the invitation to be empowered by the Holy Spirit and demands that you love righteousness and hate iniquity. That's the only demand. Hebrews 1 9, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. There will be situations you can't control that requires this power almost every day. Because when I was sharing with us, I think it was on Friday, that somebody said they have been throwing stone on your, your head. You better go and fast. Stone is coming. He said, well, I just finished a fast. I'm not going to go into another one. If you have been throwing it all this way, I can't even feel it. No single headache. That's not the power of the flesh. It's the spirit. I was HR manager at some point in my career. And so we fired somebody from Niger Delta, Nigeria, because he committed a fraud. And uh, so we were summoned, as it could happen in Nigeria, by the traditional ruler of his community. That we should come. Why did you fire the only person from our community working for you? So we got to the palace. In the palace, they must start a meeting. The meeting, well, each time they will start a meeting in that palace, the king will bite cola, put it in the oil. They give it to, to everybody one by one. So give to you, you buy it, you put in the oil, you give to the next person, you buy it. I said, well, today, today, I'm not going to eat this cola. One is hygienically terrible, <laughs> but I, knew, I know that I knew this is the spiritual implication. So as they were coming, I didn't know what I would say, but I knew very, very soon it would be my turn. But as soon as the person we went together, <laughs> I was... Also a Christian, in fact, an elder in his church. Maybe because he's an elder. The thing got to him, if he <laughs> anything. So, anyway, when he came to me, I just did my hand like this. And the fellow just passed it on. I looked at the king who looked at me. I did like this. Nobody said nothing. Look, you need power of the Holy Spirit. It gives you boldness that you can't imagine. You don't even know. When an attack is about to come, you have no idea. That's why we need this power at all times. We have been doing social Christianity for too long. There's nothing social. Everything about our faith is power. For you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you. He told them, the disciples, say, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. We're not, we're not, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, the association of, uh, you know, the, the te text and believers. No. We are defined by power. Because from the beginning, light and darkness are engaged in war. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was stuffed up and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. But the Spirit of God moves upon the face of the water, and God said, let there be light. He had been militancy from the beginning. It's not going to stop. Don't be roasted as a chicken. Because the battle is on continually. And that's why Jesus says, come and drink. And that power is coming this morning in the name of Jesus. So let me close. The invitation, follow me, is the invitation to be like Jesus. It's an invitation to discipleship. John 1, 43, John 1, 43, that day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find there Philip, the test we took, and said unto him, follow me. There is no greater honor than to be like Jesus. Lord, I want to be like Jesus. Amen. John 20, 21, then said Jesus to them, peace be unto you, as my father has sent me, even so send I you. The call, follow me, is a call unto discipleship, is a call to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus is to be a committed soul winner. To be like Jesus is to be a miracle worker. Somebody is sick in your office, you've been trying to invite them to church, so you sick? Oh, really? Ah, then you are healed. So what did you say? I said, you are healed. And then the fellow suddenly found that the head dead disappears. And then nothing else is going, ah! Say, I, I will follow you to church. 
But we have been too afraid to even tell somebody you are here. Say, what if nothing happens? To be like Jesus is to have the power over forces of darkness. To be like Jesus is to have the power to live above sin. To be like Jesus is to have peace on every side. To be like Jesus is to have your life hid in Christ and hid in God. To be like Jesus is to be indestructible. To be like Jesus is to reign eternally with him above all things. The call to follow Jesus is a call to be like Jesus. A call to discipleship. The call to follow Jesus, however, demands self-denial to carry the cross daily. Luke 9, 23. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Discipleship without a yoke is a joke. You must come under the management of the Lord Jesus. The yoke of Jesus is easy. Other alternatives are harder and destructive. Patience is needed in following Jesus. The alternative is destruction. To forgive others is needed in following Jesus. The alternative is destruction. Holiness is needed in following Jesus. The alternative is destruction. Make your choice. So three invitations are available this morning. To everyone who is willing, the invitation come unto me. The purpose is to receive rest. And you will get rest in the name of Jesus. The invitation, come and drink, is the invitation to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. That power is here. You will receive yours this morning in the name of Jesus. The invitation, follow me, is the invitation to be like Jesus. It is an invitation to discipleship. Now, somebody can invite you to a meeting or to a party. Say, sorry, I don't want. I'm hoping that's not you. Because this morning, on behalf of Jesus, I'm extending this invitation to you. If you are ready to receive the invitation, then let's rise. Thank you, Lord. I want to be like Jesus in my life. In my life, in my life. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Lord. I want to be like Jesus in my heart. If you are not born again yet, it's the first invitation. Come unto me, all you that labor and are every lady. I give you rest. If you are going to honor this invitation unto salvation, whether you are here in the virtual church, just lift your hands up. Jesus will see you where you are. And say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you. Confess my sins, forsake them. Receive you as the Lord and Savior of my soul. Please have mercy on me. Save my soul. From now on, even as you admit me into the family of God, I am born again. And if you pray that prayer is as, as simple as that, you will begin to see how the Lord will take over the affairs of your life. Father, everyone who is making this decision now, please save their souls, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Now the rest of us raise your right hand and say, Jesus, I have come unto you this morning. Please give me rest on every side. Give me rest on every side. Give me rest on every side. Oh, pray, pray, pray this prayer. I need rest. I need more of rest. Oh, yes, I have come unto you this morning. Please give me rest on every side. Give me rest on every side. My Lord and my God, please give me rest on every side. Thank you, Father. Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Say, Jesus, I have come to drink. Fill me to the overflow with the power of the Holy Spirit. I go ahead and pray. Lord Jesus, I have come. I have come to drink. Fill me to the overflow with the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray, brethren, the power is here, I can assure you. Lord, I need the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome all the challenges, to be impactful in the kingdom. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Finally, say, Jesus, I have decided to follow you all the way. Please let me be like you. 
Please, Lord, let me be like you. Let me be like you. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. If you had given your life to Christ earlier around, they will show a number on the screen and email that, that will be the number to contact us we will want to continue to pray for you we want to continue to encourage you as you grow in your new fan faith my father and my god i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice we've come unto you this morning not unto any man please lord give us rest on every side in the mighty name of jesus we have come to drink empower us with the Holy Ghost to the fullest in the name of Jesus we've made up our mind to follow you therefore let us be exactly like you in the mighty name of Jesus from now on whatever cannot destroy Jesus will not be able to destroy us because sickness cannot destroy Jesus sickness will not destroy us poverty cannot destroy Jesus poverty will fire from us in the name of Jesus because Jesus is a miracle worker we are miracle workers too in the name of Jesus because sin cannot overcome Jesus no longer will sin overcome us in the name of Jesus because Jesus lives forever we shall have eternal life in Christ in the name of Jesus thank you heavenly father blessed be your name oh God Jesus mighty name we have prayed now, if you receive yours, go ahead, give the Lord a really big clap of praise. And then you may please be seated. All right, so as we get ready to close the service, please let's bring our tithes, our offerings, and get it ready in the envelope. I want to encourage those who are yet to subscribe to our YouTube channel to do so. You can even do so just right now. You know, share our videos and, um, you know, like. And also, it on the notification button so that each time we go live you will be able to um, you know connect you know with the service uh, today at 2 p.m. is Sunday school our Sunday school is unrepresented virtual because we have members all over the world so make sure you join the details are on the screen in the evening we have a, a parish a sports parish called Maracana Sports Center I mean we, we fellowship in the world in worship you know, in everything that the church will do, but we also then do sports. Ping pong, soccer, and different kind of sports. At 6 o'clock, if you want to relax in the evening and you are not part of that church, you can join them, you know, this evening. You'll be blessed. It's at our sports arena. By the way, we have a massive sports arena uh, towards my right there. If you want to visit the place and see what's going on. At 12 noon, we want to be having a special banquet for all our first-timers over the time. It doesn't matter how far back, for as long as you have not been at the new member Connect Banquet, you are invited. I know you are in the first service, but hey, maybe you want to stay for second service, we'll soon finish, or you want to go and quickly come back, because it's important to be integrated to the family that you belong. It's going to be at 12 noon at the pavilion. It's going to be a, a short meeting. We'll eat together. we fellowship together. We meet each other closely. You can ask questions that you might be interested in all our ministry leaders i'm sure you know you have to be there so they can understand what you do in your ministry ask you you know one-on-one -on -one questions and if they're interested in your ministry then you can integrate them right away now who got the biggest blessing of this service let me hear you shout aloud hallelujah so let's rise now take one or two choruses as we close the service